Hey folks, I uh, just quickly want to show you a little technique I used to create uh, cracks, alphas, for like various different types of uh, projects. Um, in this video I'm just going to show how to like make a typical like stone cracked alpha like this in ZBrush. Um, so there's probably tons of tutorials already how to do this. I'm just going to show you my own method. Um, so this is for creating alphas. I wouldn't really do this manually on like a finalized uh, detailed mesh because it just takes too long. But it's great for doing alphas um, for the most part. So it's very, very simple. Uh, you only use two brushes here. Uh, technically three, I guess, if you use the smoothing as well. But two brushes. Um, first one here is uh, damn standard, obviously, to create your to create your cracks. And uh, then the other brush here is the Trim Smooth Border. Uh, so if you're not seeing this one in your ZBrush, you probably need to, need to go to Lightbox and into your brush uh, section. And then here into the Trim Brushes, and it's the last one here, the Trim Smooth Border. Okay, so with these two brushes, it's very simple to create uh, like nice sharpish cracks. And like it's entirely up to you how, how sharp you want to make them like this. But so I'm going to start with my damn standard here. I'm just going to make like a crack where I want to make a crack um, and I can sort of like the, the width of the crack and everything is totally up to you and then uh, this doesn't really look uh, very very convincing does it so the way to get this to look more like this is to just use your trim uh, not trim dynamic trim smooth border and then here on the flat area you start sculpting here and you hold alt and you move inwards towards the uh, towards the crack here. Um, let me go to a higher subdivision so you can see what I'm doing. You sort of create a, a sharper edge, so you push it inwards like this. Now it's still kind of smooth. If you want it even a little bit sharper than that, you can change the alpha to this uh, square white alpha here. Uh, I think it's this one, yeah. And this one gives you uh, sort of a little bit of even sharper result. And so, but it's important to hold Alt while you while you drag inwards from the flat area because how this brush works is it takes this plane, the, the normals of this area here, and it tries to extend them to anything that isn't uh, like the same normal. So it also works uh, if you sort of take this normal here and you try to extend it outwards. It sort of tries to keep that. That's how the brush works. And this is really really nice for just quickly coming in and creating some sharpened edges here. Um, very, very useful. Uh, this is also, by the way, extremely useful for, for sculpting rocks, anything with hard edges like crystals. Um, hugely useful brush. It's it's one of the brushes that keeps me using ZBrush instead of just using Blender, because right now Blender doesn't have anything that's quite like this. Um, it's a, an extremely useful brush. And so again, hold Alt, and just drag inwards from the flat area to sort of create a, a sharpened edge. And if you don't hold Alt, um, I should probably demonstrate what happens if you don't hold Alt. So if there's if there's like a raised area, and you and you use Trim Smooth Border, uh, if you hold Alt here, you'll see it just it tries to raise it to that. But if you don't hold Alt, it sort of tries to flatten it out. So very very useful again for for this kind of sculpting. Um, and so yeah, you just how good it looks. It just depends on how long you how long you're willing to spend on this. But I just really try to be a little bit random and just go fast. You know, um, if there's a little bit of an area where you sort of uh, close the gap, I, I typically don't worry about that. Kind of looks more natural. But if you want to reopen it, just sort of start from here and carefully sort of drag it back in there and. You know, you can you can even um, play around and give a bit of randomization here and sort of just just uh, yeah, play around with it. And so that uh, that's how I create my my cracks and stuff. So I I really just it's fast. It's it's fairly fast. Like if you were to do like a final model with this method, uh, it's it probably would take too long, but I really like this for, for creating alphas and so on. Because it's just... And then after you've done this, obviously, you get to bake this plane onto uh, like 
to a height map or something or, or a normal map or, or whichever you please but yeah so that's that's how I do it um, very useful very fast and like you can really pump out a lot of offers if you if you need to using this method so yeah it just I feel like it it sort of brings it a little bit of ra that randomness that you wouldn't get if you use like a special brush or something because and, and you sort of get to customize exactly how and where you want uh, maybe a little bit of a broken edge or a, or whatever so again just I know this brush is really hard to learn to use uh, when I when I first started using it I really couldn't make much sense of how it works but you just gotta remember the brush works it's based on normal information I believe so it's it takes the information where you start your stroke and sort of tries to keep that if you hold alt and um, depending on depending on if it's a raised or or uh, sort of uh, lowered area um, just takes a little bit of getting used to but very very useful brush uh, I use this brush so much when I when I do environment sculpting and uh, rocks, that that kind of thing. Uh, broken concrete, uh, wooden stuff that's like cracked and everything. You get the idea. So yeah, that's how I do it. And then after this is done, I probably just bake it to a low low poly um, plane or to a off a map or whichever. Okay, so cool. I uh, hope that helps and thanks for watching.